time is very limited, so let's uh, turn to Helen, okay, to come up with her ideas. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to start by picking up on something that Art said, actually, about creating new specific networks around OGP. I, I would question whether that's the best approach. We have so many existing networks already. I'm, I wasn't sure if you were proposing it or suggest, oh, you were suggesting we don't, great. Um, our challenge then is how do we uh, link up, first of all, the existing networks which are already close to OGP, and there are many of them, multiple in this room, and people who are part of many networks already. I'm getting nodding, yes. We're all in too many networks already. Um, and the second then is how do we reach out to even wider communities? Um, and very briefly, I, 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 my proposal is that one of the ways in which we do this is that we use the question of the content of the action plans and the commitments and the content of the standards on open government. Um, many of you will know that Access Info, the organization I work for along with other groups, have been working on a set of open government standards. Um, and I'll, I'll use a couple of examples very briefly just to say how we might use those standards to get out further. Take the example of the kind of data sets that we want to be released proactively. I think that the focus in the first round has been on the kind of data sets that um, with due respect, the geeks want to get their hands on, the people who are making the mobile phones app, the, the numbers, the data. But there is so much more information, some of it data and some of it, um, some of it quantitative and some of it qualitative that we need to be getting. And Rakesh's example of the kind of data that was really useful at the end of the day to understand whether education is working or not, I think is a very nice example of that. And how are we going to be able to define what kind of data we need? We have to turn to the communities that will actually use that data. So if we're looking at data sets on health, on education, on the rights of disabled people, whatever it may be, on minorities, migrants, um, in various different sectors that we're concerned about, um, then we need to be working with those communities who, um, as, as you were saying, is, is, they're not, they don't see themselves as transparency or accountability or participation. They've got real day-to-day -day problems which they're addressing. So I think we need to use our standards process to bring in those wider communities. And then my other point is about the um, businesses and small businesses. Um, it, this came up at the Civil Society Day on Wednesday. Kind of what, what happened to the businesses in this three-way multi-stakeholder process? Um, maybe it doesn't matter because in my view, business is part of civil society. And I've just been online, the wonderful proactive publication of information by the European Union. I've checked my facts. Um, there are 20 million businesses in the EU region. They represent 99%, oh, 20 million small and medium enterprises, which represent 99% of all businesses. So I think with the, within the OGP process, when we're looking at the civil society groups that we're trying to include, let's not forget um, the small businesses as well, not only think about business as big business, um, and try to include those, that sector in, in our networks. There are networks of small businesses who are often doing a lot at the community level, and that's very important. And then it's already been mentioned, academia and think tanks. So we still have a lot of work to do, but we can use the mechanisms which have been set up under OGP, and to finish picking up on Zoe's point, which I thought was very important, this correlation between the quality of the consultation and the quality of the commitments. And if we want commitments on transparency, accountability, and participation, which really serve to meet the needs of the most disadvantaged in society, we have to find the mechanisms for including those people in the process of defining the, the goals and the commitments. And that means we simply have to broaden our networks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Helen. Two brilliant ideas. One is with regard to the broader link uh, involving CSO to enlarge our organization. Me, as the coming co-chair of this OGP, I welcome that idea because by, at least I can 
share my burden in enlarging this OGP 